I'm Sheriff Paul Penzo with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. One of the things I've learned in my 30 years in law enforcement is that you can never take for granted the relationships you must build with your partners both within and outside your own organization. There are more than 8,000 local election officials who are responsible for administering our nation's elections and ensuring that they are free, fair, and secure. In recent years, there's been a disturbing increase in the number of threats against these public servants, their staff, and our election infrastructure. In today's threat environment, law enforcement and election officials need to work together. We need to strengthen collaborations and keep our nation's elections safe and secure. Threatening election officials is something that may be accepted in some places around the world, but not here, not in America. Let's look at the steps we need to take to work together to protect our elections. The starting point is to meet with your election or law enforcement counterparts and with other stakeholders. This first step is essential to success in the process. Successful cooperation requires mutual understanding of others' operating environments. Once you meet, sharing information about processes and procedures, such as de-escalation, escalation, and plans is key. In the past, agencies didn't collaborate. Thankfully, with your help, that is changing today. So what information should we share? Share any history of election worker and voter intimidation. Understand each other's operating environment and describe the special aspects of your work that may not be familiar to the other party. For example, are there special procedures when ballots are present? Provide details about important election administration events and processes in your jurisdiction. For example, does your election official offer early voting and if so, where and when? Identify key staff and the points of contact for law enforcement and election offices. Set expectations and boundaries. Consider and manage any jurisdictional questions before election day. And finally, ensure that community groups have opportunities to provide input and are informed of plans and expectations. So what comes next? With any good collaboration, groups must define the rules of engagement between organizations. In order to do that, the collaborating members must agree on several things. First, understand the applicable laws and regulations of the jurisdiction. In the past, law enforcement officers haven't had much election-specific training. This is similar to 20 years ago, when there was little, if any, training given to law enforcement about school safety. But we all know how much that has changed because of the current environment. Second, consider voter concerns. It is vitally important for our nation that voters and election officials feel safe and secure, and law enforcement is an important partner in this important work. At the same time, a prominent law enforcement presence can be troubling for some and is restricted by law in some jurisdictions. Discussion of that balance is a necessary basis for rules of engagement. Third, discuss law enforcement engagement. Each agency must identify when and under what circumstances law enforcement will be called to keep the peace, investigate potential violations of law, or assist in other ways. Law enforcement will benefit from training on how to balance protection of election workers and voters with protection of everyone's First Amendment rights. Clear guidance will help officers make better decisions in difficult situations. That takes us to step four, plan. Once these agreements are in place, we must all be prepared to follow our own rules and meet the expectations of our partners. We must plan responses to incidents based, among other things, on their severity and whether or not voters are present. It is vital that law enforcement keep in mind their goal is to de-escalate a situation, if at all possible. Plan to move disputes away from the voting area using plainclothes officers when appropriate. Maintaining a safe elections process and a citizen's right not to be intimidated while voting must be taken into consideration when planning responses to security concerns. Elections workers must know when to call police. It has to be clear guidance because this is critical. Plan for emergency response when appropriate. What situations will dictate this type of response? Threats of physical violence and bomb threats might be examples of when an emergency response from law enforcement is warranted. The important thing is that these are all considerations included in a plan between yourself and your partner agencies. This brings us to the final step. A plan is only as good as your ability to put it into practice. Law enforcement agencies will be familiar, and election offices increasingly so, with the tabletop exercise. A tabletop exercise, or TTX, is an exercise that brings together key personnel from law enforcement and elections to practice agreed upon plans for coordinated responses to different security scenarios which reinforces understanding and strengthens adherence to its principles and components. 
Law enforcement has a long history of using scenario-based training, which has resulted in increased preparedness in many different environments, such as major events planning, school safety, and many other situations. We must ensure that police officers are just as well trained and prepared in the election security context. Every community and jurisdiction is unique. Local elections must work together to identify what works best in your jurisdiction. And this process will require local planning and coordination. I recognize that we all come from different walks of life, different political beliefs and principles, different faiths, different denominations. Yet when it comes to law enforcement, we all made a commitment to the same oath of office. That is to protect our community, to enforce the laws, to be objective, to always use good discretion, to recognize that protecting our democracy and our community has to be job one. 